بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وراء. I think we finished the book of the equality, right? The chapter of equality. We finished the the chapter of al musawat. Did we? Oh, we did. Okay. Did we finish the the chapter of no? Huh? Okay. Tay. Yeah, I have a page, but I wanted to be sure. Tay. We were talking about the equality in Islamic Sharia as uh, a core, a foundation, a base, a spirit. That's why we said in the Islamic jurisprudence, I don't know why this is his an equal. Well, I think we did it. Sorry. We, we finished? Yeah. Taib, alhamdulillah. Yeah. The, the next chapter is freedom, right? Yeah. That's why I said there's few chapters that are not translated for a reason. Uh, I'm sure that the author has, he has his own reason. And uh, that's why we, we have studied, you know, we're studying from the original book that the author uh, wrote. For this chapter that we're going to go through, inshallah ta'ala, you'll not find them in the book. Maybe if you... Bismillah. Taib is good like this. The When we talked about the equality, the last part that we were talking about, so in brief to uh, to resume, for, uh, you know, with the thoughts that we were uh, sharing last time. فَقُلْنَا الْمُسَوَاتُ uh, one of the things, so the conclusion, uh, when you say, for example, what did you retain from the chapter of the Musawat? Equality in Islam, and this is a fact, is a reality, is embedded in the Islamic jurisprudence. Equality in Islam is not an objective to attain. Like justice, uh, uh, fairness, uh, all of that are not in Islam something to, to achieve a virtue to get. Subhanallah. In Islam, these virtues are already embedded in the system. It's a soul, it's a spirit. So it comes from the foundation. I will not say let's, let's organize ourselves to achieve equality. No, the equality is in, in, the, in, in the heart of the Sharia. So we don't work to achieve equality. Actually, we work to avoid for this equality to be, to be obstructed or for this equality for someone to stop it. So it is like, it is into the heart, into the soul of the Sharia. Why? Because the Sharia is embedded and arise from the inner nature, natural disposition. If you see, you know, uh, anyone from two kids from different backgrounds, see them playing together, that's the inner nature. When everyone grows with his thoughts, and the other one grows, you know, being then he become aware of his color, of his background, and how he's going to be aware of that, of the discrimination. The same person when they were young, playing together, innocent, they don't know about this thing. Then when they grow up because of what, you know, ill thing being spreaded and uh, people, they, uh, you know, it's, it's their way. That subhanAllah, when it becomes like uh, awkwardness and we say, we need to achieve equality. No, as, as someone born free, equal to each other, so it stays. That's the Sharia. Everyone is the same. But this equality cannot be implemented in certain circumstances. So we mention these circumstances not 
equality that we want to avoid it. No, the implementation of the equality actually will cause mischief. That's why it cannot be. So when we say word equality, we cannot make equality in all the circumstances. We keep the equality, but we hold off on it when it's going to cause injustice. So here the equality, as long as fulfill its objective of justice, of fairness, then it is part of the Sharia. When it ceases to do such a thing, we don't do it. So he, he gave us some examples, like we, we talked the example about certain aspect between the man and the woman, certain aspect between the knowledgeable and the ignorant, you know, uh, someone, certain aspect between someone working hard and someone he's, uh, he's lazy, when it comes to compensation, it will be, if you do equality, say we have to compensate equal. I said, but this is not fair. This person, he works so hard. This person, he doesn't even show up. You see, this is the, when we say mawana al musawir this is when we do not uh, implement the equality because the equality here is unjust, is, is like volume. Uh, saying this type of mawana of equality, what things that will uh, uh, have the equality to not imp be implemented. Why? Because we have a greater good. We have a greater good. So for example, um, there is rights that the individual have, and then the society, they had, for example, a project, which is have the good for the whole society. But to implement uh, the, this good or to achieve it is going to have some individual to take away their rights. So here there's no equality. They say because for the greater good, kind of uh, we have in this individual to take away or to take his right. Why? Because of the greater good. That's what he mentioned and he called them awarud. Awarud things that they come to uh, have the equality not be implemented, but in the way that we mentioned. As long as the equality leading to justice, leading to the fairness, uh, leading to the common good, it will be, it is part of the Sharia. But when the equality is implementation, is going to differ from the uh, justice to the injustice, from the fairness to the unfairness, then this equality here should not be um, implemented. Uh, he mentioned many of the ahkam that we went through uh, last time. And also he has, for example, uh, he, he mentioned things like uh, uh, equality will not be possible based on uh, natural disposition. It might be, you know, from someone who's like, what the difference between men and women. Uh, the equality for, uh, for example, uh, social consideration, social consideration, uh, like uh, you cannot make equality between uh, a serious person and uh, a lazy person, between a knowledgeable person and someone who didn't study at all. So you cannot, for example, have the same composition or regard for, for here, you cannot have uh, equality in the ishtihad, for example, you require people to do for you ishtihad. You require people to do for you, for example, take care of a certain task, uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, treating sick people. You cannot implement equality here. We need experts to treat sick people. We don't need everybody. So if someone will come and say, I can give all my time to take care of them, I said, no, we cannot have you know, accept you because you don't have the expertise. Not because you are willing to do it, that you will be accepted to do it. Uh, there's, uh, you know, mawana, there's impediment to like uh, political ones, you know, political, when in certain situation, there's things could not be granted based on the equality because of political consideration. And this political consideration only are regarded because it has the greater good for the whole nation, the greater good for the whole nation. These are, uh, this is how we uh, uh, finish the chapter of the equality. If you have any question on, on that. 
The next chapter, uh, you don't have it in the book, قَالَ لَيْسَتِ الشَّرِيعَةُ بِنِكَيْهِ is an aspect and characteristic of the Islamic jurisprudence, an Islamic uh, Sharia. Laysat bi nikaya, what does this mean? The Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal Sharia to hurt, to vex, to be uh, a tool of uh, uh, nikaya, exasperation, of annoyance, of irritation. So the Sharia wasn't or uh, revealed only as a mercy. So certain, certain things that might be someone irritating a person, say, oh, this is the Sharia, that's what it is. Say, no, the Sharia never was in its, uh, uh, you know, origin, or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing for us all the Sharia to have a source of annoyance or exasperation or irritation. There's none or uh, not such a thing into the Sharia. So he's saying here, for example, the Sharia, the objective of the Sharia, قال من خصائص شريعة الإسلام أنها شريعة عملية تسعى إلى تحصيل مقاصدها في عموم الأم. One of the characteristics of the Sharia is a Sharia that is active and practical Sharia. It's not like spiritual in a way that is absolute. That is, you know, uh, is no, things like his only statement said. In, in the spiritual, is it spiritual, but is action. Spirituality that you, is a dynamic, that you live, that you uh, fulfill, that you observe, uh, that you plan, that you achieve, etc. قال تسعى إلى تحصيل مقاصدها في عموم الأمة وفي خويصة الأفراد. Not only in the nation as a community, but also for all the individuals. فلذلك كان الأهم في نظرها إمكان تحصيل مقاصدها. So the most important in the Sharia is how to achieve its intent, its objective. And this only can be done through the path of easiness and kindness and leniency. So if the Sharia want to help you get to your goal, it cannot be by force, it cannot be by in, uh, irritation, it can be by, uh, you know, hurting. It only can be by leniency and kindness and care. You never can someone accept Islam or accept your way or follow you, tell him this is so good when you have a gun pointing to his face. He will be scared, he will say, yes, I will follow you. As soon as you leave, he will plan to, to, to revenge, to, 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 to hurt, because you are, that person becomes a source of evil, not a source of good. Therefore, annoyance, or nikaya as he called, this is not into the sharia at all. However, in the in the scripture before and in the faith groups before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had them to go through, uh, you know, burden them with certain, certain ways as punishment. So, yes, before certain ahkam because of the action or the you know, uh, the way of how, you know, people uh, before, they were somehow rebellious, somehow uh, violating, somehow being stubborn, somehow will being, you know, uh, working against the way of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ahkam, laws, not to help them cleanse, but to subhanAllah is like to enchain them. Like, for example, the people of the book, and the follower of Musa alayhi salam, there are some of the share ahkam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made it to be an obligation on them as way of, of punishment. So it becomes like really uh, irritation. It's like, it's nikaya. It's like, the, you know, this law, you are implementing it because you've been rebellious and this is as kind of punishment. That's why Isa alayhi salam, when he came, he said, I'm going to lift the burden that you had on you. Aglal, you've been like enchained. 
So imagine Sharia was kind of chain on them. Why? Because they deserved it because of their, of their, uh, you know, way, uh, crooked way, and their uh, action of being, uh, you know, of ill action that they had. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah An Nisa, Ayah one sixty and one sixty one. قال فبظلم من الذين هادوا فبظلم من الذين because of a transgression of the follower of Musa عليه السلام حرمنا عليهم طيبات وحلت لهم we made haram on them things that it was halal for them from the burden that they have the real chain Allah سبحانه وتعالى made for example the fat to be haram so imagine if someone have a piece of meat, he has to take the whole fat. That meat is halal. The fat on top of it is haram. So one bite, part haram and part halal. So to have it halal, not like the Muslim, you slaughter it and everything is halal for you. This is the meat in front of them. They have to take all that that uh, fat, why? Because it's haram. قال وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّ وَمِنَ الْبَقَرِ وَالْغَنِمِ حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ شُحُومَهُمَا Subhanallah, from the cow. So this is what Allah said. قال فَبِظُلْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٌ أُحِلَّتْ لَهُمْ وَبِصَدِّهِمْ عَنْ سَبِيلَ Because they were working against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Putting obstacle to the way of Allah. كَثِيرًا وَأَخْذِهِمُ الرِّبَى وَقَدْنُهُ عَنْهُ They used to take usury and they been forbidden and prohibited to, to, to deal with usury, with the interest, the usury. وَقَدْنُهُ وَأَكْلِهِمْ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ And they taken the money of the people with falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala burdened them with laws to enchain them. The law of the Sharia in Islam are mercy to elevate and cleanse us. That's why Sharia at Isa alayhi salam came to, to guide them to what is best and to make for them those chains. Qal, wallah, the Prophet sallam also to the people of the book, qala wa yarfa'u al-aghlal. You being have things that are harab. Now if you follow Isa alayhi salam, he's going to make it for you halal. Not out of his whims, alayhi salam, is a revelation. The same for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's why Islam is gift to everyone. Therefore here, when we understand Islam, if he abrogates, hukum is because seeking this leniency, this, this seeking this mercy. And if he says things, making things قَالَ أَشَدْ harder is also for the good. So when you see in Islam, there's a hakam getting to be like, say, uh, you know, say, no, this is here haram, you cannot do it. So the fact to be firm on the haram, that is the rahmah. Why? Because there is no annoyance or irritation or nikaya in the sharia of Islam. Uh, here he given us the example, uh, the leniency and the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the alcohol to be haram. Alcohol was haram from the beginning. It was actually in the previous books, it was haram. In the Torah is haram, in the Bible is haram. In Islam, the Sharia, uh, you know, has this care, this leniency, the way of rifq, kindness. So the tahrim, the process of prohibition took time. Why? Because they seek in the rahmah. So in the beginning, say, it's not good. The second, don't come to the prayer while you're drunk. Then it is haram. Leave it. Why? Because that spirituality, that iman, that taqwa, it takes time to grow into the heart of, of an, an, a nation. And then when it comes to level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it say, abrogate everything, it is haram.
Then also he given us another example. The same thing, the punishment that being um, uh, obligated in the Islamic Sharia, they were a punishment seeking rahmah, seeking a great good for the whole nation, for the whole community. And you see the punishment in Islam, all of them like uh, uh, are, uh, subhanAllah, badaniya. It, it inflicted on the body. So it has like a, a hurt or like, you know, alam pain. And he's saying here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he knew that there's another alternative to correct them, then the Sharia will have taken that aspect or taken that choice. But Allah knows what will correct. So the punishment here, what will hold off someone to not commit a violation in the society is his piety. But if his piety is not strong enough to help him, you put for him a barrier, had. If you're going to dare, you're going to be punished. But this punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it to be uniform on everyone. For example, why the punishment could not be paying fees? Because someone, he will have enough money to pay the fees. The other one cannot. But when he's inflicted on the body, you will have it like equality on everyone, the poor and the rich. They will have the same pain. And that's what will correct them. But if someone has enough taqwa, he will not going to get there. He's saying also, there are some of the crime that uh, punishment is not describing the sharia. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let it open for the ummah to decide how to correct. So he give you the guidance, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidelines, and then comes the way how every society or at every time they will have the ability to find the right way how to reprimand a violation or a crime. Qal, uh, as in time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala when someone for example the origin of the crime is done to make money from haram so the punishment need to be like confiscate that money. Why? Because the intention is to make this money. So the punishment is to take away this money that you've been earned in the way of the haram. Like Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, one of his punishment, uh, finding out some homes being used as uh, places to, 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 to serve alcohol and everything for the sake to make money. So those houses is being confiscated or those houses, all of it to be like burned. Why? Because this whole thing being, uh, you know, like uh, constructed for this specific sin. How to, uh, to punish it is to take it away. To take it away. Another hadith that uh, uh, give us also the answer, uh, some of the idea that we are sharing about this uh, sharia is not uh, to irritate, is not to punish. The sharia is asal, is to, to shower the blessing and rahmah. And whatever you see in the sharia is origin, is mercy. Nothing have to do annoyance or exasperation as also happened in uh, sharia or jurisprudence before us. And because of the reason that we mentioned, uh, and the example of the ayah from Surah Nisa that we mentioned. Uh, hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari an Abi Huraira, uh, that the Prophet sallam, uh, he came to know that some of the companions used to continue the fasting after the sunset. Why they want to follow the way of the Prophet sallam. So the Prophet sallam said, do not do so, because Allah is taking care of me. But you, you should not do it. قَالَ إِنِّي أَبِيتُ يُطْعِمُنِي رَبِّي وَيَسْخِينَ But some of them, they refuse. They continue. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, now is like an obligation for you to do it. By refusing, 
made it an obligation for certain of them. Here it becomes that kind of punishment the Prophet is doing because you obeyed, uh, you disobeyed, you refused to do something that Allah gave it to you. Then the punishment, or not punishment, like to uh, ir kind of uh, uh, way, let's say it's punishment, is to become an obligation for them to continue the fasting. And here, we cannot take it as a hukum, because the Prophet said they didn't do it to have continuing of the fasting the whole day and even after the sunset, but to regard that the Prophet said want to educate them, want to correct them, want to discipline them. So he said when he learned that they didn't want to stop, he said, now you have to do it. It's the kind of discipline. Because when someone has the option to do it, like he wants to do it. But when you obligate it on him, it becomes kind of an annoyance because it becomes a burden. Because he cannot, he doesn't have the choice anymore to, to stop doing it. And this is the Prophet only did it as Allah did it for the people before. Why? To, to discipline them. To discipline. But in the Sharia, ah, there is no uh, such nikaya and such a thing. This is uh, the chapter, the next chapter, but if you have any question, inshallah, we can treat it. Uh, 7.15 in 10 minutes, we'll take the break, and we'll be back, inshallah. Uh, 7.45. Okay. Okay. 10 minutes, we'll take the break. Any question concerning the chapter? The conclusion, Sharia, doesn't have in its foundation, in its principle, in its laws, any intention to irritate or to punish or to cause exasperation or to go, cause annoyance, uh, annoyance. So such thing doesn't exist in the Sharia. All what you see in the Sharia is in its intent is to cleanse, to purify, to bless, and to seek correction and good. The, this chapter called Minat Tashri'i Taghirun wa Taqreer from among the uh, laws of the jurisprudence is to change and to confirm. Why is it among the laws of the Sharia? Because the law of the Sharia didn't come to change us. And this is, we already touched the uh, point of it, if you remember when we're talking about the customs and the habit. So the Sharia will protect the tradition, keep the tradition, keep the habit, as long as they are noble and they are good. So here, more he goes in depth to give us some of the examples. So first, the Sharia doesn't come to change you as a person. It doesn't change your identity. It doesn't change you uh, the way you uh, you know uh, you live uh, you, your your lifestyle. Except if someone's lifestyle is very far from the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So he's saying, let's look at the uh, this uh, masala from two points of view. The first point of view. That the Sharia comes to change, but change what? Change only the things that they are bad, that they are uh, wrong. That is a fact, that the Sharia, what is objective to change these things are wrong, which are wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah Allah is the protector, is the guardian of the believers. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِنَ النُّورِ he take them, taking them out from the darkness to the light. So anything that the believer who come to Islam, anything that is dark in his life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take him out from darkness to bring him to the light. So the changing here is either can be toward 
more, uh, let's say, sternness, can be more like uh, stronger, a shed. Uh, for example, someone, uh, he, he needs to make more effort to be like more rigid. Uh, and rigid maybe is not the right word, but to, to be a shed, something, you know, more serious. Or the change will be like lighting thing, make it more easy. So we have, but both sides is seeking al-akmal, seeking the better, the best. Okay? So, uh, Why? Considering what is good for them. Because when someone is... Uh, use it to something it becomes easy for him that's that's his habit someone used to drink alcohol is haram so the sharia told him stop that for him is is rigid is hard so the tahir can be for something harder but this hard thing this change is good for this person in and he will see it in a while but he takes his process, his gradually way to do it. The Sharia also can come, things are hard, make it easy for them. Why is always bringing, so if something is low, make it harder. Why? Because we have a balance, and in that balance is what is good for you. So if something low, it might the Sharia make it difficult for you, harder for you. Why? To lift you to that level. Something that you make it like, you know, it's hard for you that you're making it, but the Sharia doesn't require for you, the, the, the line of goodness is below, so make it easy for you. So whatever sense or direction the Sharia is directing to you is just to bring you to that balance of goodness. So he'll give us an example. For example, uh, before the woman, when her husband passed away, she has to say whole year. Idda, waiting period, a whole year. A whole year, what is this, uh, the reason behind it? So it's difficult for a woman to stay a whole year. So the Sharia, I bring it down to four months, ten. Why? Because it might have, you know, uh, possibility of pregnancy, uh, the right for the husband, uh, have that uh, al-had mourning, her dear one who passed away, four months and ten days, that's enough. So here the Sharia, from something, it was kind of harder, make it easy, reduce it. And even mourning, uh, it was in the Jahiliya very harsh and very awkward before Islam. So Islam come to cleanse it, make it to be a balance. The woman doesn't, cannot put any kohal uh, makeup, uh, uh, cannot, uh, you know, uh, wear, you know, things of afrah. And this is are known in, uh, for mutawafi anha zawjaha, the one who lost her, her spouse. In time of jahiliya, it was, she has to stay in a house, small house, that is like kind of dilapidated. It doesn't have anything. I mean, the worst. I mean, maybe the animals, they will live in this type of, of uh, you know, place. That's where she has to be. Then it's forbidden for her to clean herself, to even comb her hair. And it was like very awkward uh, habit and tradition that they had. Qala, uh, she has to wear the worst of the clothes. She will be like, you know, kind of uh, uh, a place, maybe uh, a very, very dilapidated. It's like, you know, nobody will even live in this place. She has to say something. Haqir, uh, as he said. And she doesn't have the right to wash herself and nor to put any perfume. Al-Islam, he annuls such a thing. But Al-Islam make, you know, things to be lenient. She will not have the size of someone who 
you know, when she's been seen, she knows that she's mourning her, her dear one who, who passed away. So she doesn't make the kohl in the eyes. Uh, she doesn't put fragrances, uh, holy, uh, jewelry. And after four months and ten days, she'll put everything back. And here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this taghir, sometimes uh, the nature of human being, if Allah make it easy, people, they want to make it more easy. And if Allah make it, you know, hard, people, they want to ignore it. This is the nature of the people. And there is hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, a woman came to him. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I have my daughter, or her spouse passed away. But she has a uh, kind of pain in her eyes. Can she use the kohl? Al kohl is that uh, type of black thread they put around the eye. But this used actually to beautify the eyes. So it's known as to be a kind of a makeup. But also they use it, al-ithmad, it has good effect on the eyes. So the Prophet said, no. She repeats, she said, no, no. She said, she has a pain. The Prophet said, no. She said, and then the Prophet said, it's only four months and ten days. Which is mean, remember, it was a whole year. Allah made it four months and ten days. After the break, we'll uh, uh, study together the wisdom in the refusal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in holding and protecting the way of the Sharia. See you after the break, insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah amma ba'a. Continuing our uh, class of uh, maqasid al-shari'a and uh, we stopped at the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he been asking uh, the permission to use al-kuhl for the one who her husband passed away. And the Prophet ﷺ, and this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, in hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, in the uh, explanation of the hadith, uh, someone always, when you think uh, of the commands of the Prophet ﷺ, his own what he is rahma, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he is rahma to the humankind. Therefore, the Prophet Sallallahu if he read the explanation of the hadith, he didn't want for this uh, lady to have a pain and to lose her sight or vision by saying no and no. Uh, in the other uh, surah, because there's other ways to, to heal and to cure the eyes. There's other medication. There's other ways for to do that. Not the kohat. So when there's, for example, you have, uh, like uh, people, for example, they use things, say, I have to take this medication. But medication that might contain something is haram. Say, get the alternative. There's alternative. Get the one that it doesn't have the haram. Now, in the case that there's no other alternative and it becomes a necessity, that becomes a different haram. So here the Prophet ﷺ said, no, no, no. Why? Because first... As we mentioned, the author, when the Sharia make things easy, people, they incline to make it like, to, to make it easier. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what the Prophet sallallahu he said. He said, it was a whole year. Allah made it for you to be four months and ten days. So this is already Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant for this ummah. Then what Allah gave you, be grateful and observe it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated. Don't try to make things more permission. If you try to get more permission, that's when you break the deen. So here the Prophet sallallahu by saying no, he's protecting the sharia. Protecting that 
uh, way how to deal with the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when someone say ask for fatwa, he always ask for the ease part. At certain moment he say no, that's, that's it, there is no, no, nothing else. That's where you have to stop. But everyone is always inclined to get it like easier, uh, better. Can we do this? If there's no way out. And there's, that's how people that start to shop around the world, you know, to find the easiest fatwa. Actually, to, to find the fatwa that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the fatwa that will be conformed to someone's dreams or someone's ways, what he wants to do. So here the Prophet by saying, no, 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 is the fact to teach us that the kohar, the makeup here, is forbidden. He said, in the hadith, قال لا مرتين إنما هي أربعة أشهر. It's only four months. Allah didn't make it ten years. It was already one year. And then in the hadith, قالت زينب بنت أبي سلمة. She was describing the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So imagine someone he was in a very harsh situation. The Sharia came, make it very easy for you. Now when you take the easy, people, they look at it as harsh. That's why they want to do this and do this. He said, just look what you had before. Then observe what Allah gave you. So this is when we talk, the Sharia come to change, seeking the Rahmah, but what the Sharia give you is already that uh, right uh, aspect for you to have the Rahmah. So observe it is actually... Uh, your goodness, uh, your your peace in what you going to observe what not, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave you. Uh, look what Zayn bint Abi Salama she said about this example that we given. قالت كانت المرأة إذا توفي عنها زوجها دخلت حفشا ولبست شر ثيابها. Look the uh, ill tradition that they have when the woman her husband passed away. As we mentioned earlier, دخلت حفشن. حفشن is like a small uh, place, room, uh, dilapidated, حقيره, no one even uh, will, uh, will think to, to, uh, to, to dwell in it or to stay in it. She has to stay a whole year there, a whole year. Hmm? دخلت حفشن. قالت, uh, وَلَبِسَتْ شَرَّ ثِيَابِهَا And she has to wear the worst of her clothes. I mean, the worst of the clothes. وَلَمْ تَمَسْ طِيبًا وَلَا شَيْئًا She will not, she doesn't have the right to have perfume or to do makeup. حَتَّى تَمُرَّ بِهَا سَنَةً Till the whole year will pass. ثُمَّ أُتِيَ بِدَابَةِ حِمَارٍ أَوْ شَاتٍ أَوْ طَائِرٍ فَتَفْطَضُّ بِهَا So, after a year, how is she going to break this, this mourning period? Look, subhanAllah, this is ignorance. They, they bring her any, uh, an animal. It's a donkey or a bird. And she has to wipe all her skin from the front with this animal. It's either she holds the donkey, she, you know hold on his skin, and then she wipe her body, or she take a bird and she, uh, she wipe her, uh, you know, skin with the body. Uh, so Zainab, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she's saying, قَالَ فَقَلَّمَ تَفْتَضُّ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا مات. If she take a bird and she scrub her body with it, said, really, anything that they use, you know, really to stay alive. So that bird causing because of that filth that the body is accumulating and the way how they use it, that bird will die. <laughs> this is the jayri. Then she came out and they give her like, you know, ba'ra, which is uh, the remaining, you know, what the, the able will have, you know, the excrement or the pieces of the able. Take it. And she throw it in her back. So this is the end. It's like this is a witness or a sign of the end of the, of the morning. And that's how she came back. And she says she ran because she doesn't want anybody to see on that situation. 
Imagine one year without washing, one year without uh, fragrances, one year in, alone in this place. Well, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, when she had been asked for this lady to do the kohal because of the pain of the eyes, he said, no. Allah give you all, grant you this. It is forbidden to do it for four months, so don't do it. Even if you have a pain in the eyes, there's other alternative when you can have another treatment, but don't do the kohal, which is a makeup, and the makeup for the period of mourning is haram. So this is how the balance of the sharia. So when someone, for example, say, uh, Allah made this haram and made this haram, and tell them how many things you have halal. And if he made it haram, it's not just nikay to annoy you, he made it haram to help you, to cleanse you. Okay, the different uh, view, uh, this is the first one, the different view or perspective in changing and confirming. That qala taqreeru ahwalin salihatin qadid taba'aha al-nas. Islam, uh, embrace and confirm habit and tradition that been followed by people because they are good. Because the nature of a human being is not a nature that is bad. So Islam doesn't come because everyone is evil. People, they have good things. People, they are like wise people. People, they are like nice, kind. So Islam comes to help them, cleanse them. So whatever good that they have, they keep it. So Islam embraced that. Okay? In society, you know, by good, ma'roof, something that nice and accepted and beneficial. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya'muruhum bil ma'roof, he enjoy good and forbid evil. Uh, and he's saying here, the author, and said, if you just look back in what the humanity has as background, as, you know, what they've been carrying as good thing from, from the beginning, from Adam, alayhi salam, you find a lot of things. For example, قَالَ uh, uh, You see people, you know, uh, society, they have uh, built, uh, elaborate on the civil rights, uh, building, uh, you know, uh, towns, cities, uh, structure, organization. All of that is good. You cannot say Islam came, say, oh, yeah, just wipe everything. We're going to change everything. No. So Islam came to embrace and lift, as, as I mentioned before. You find many of the things that are good and being inherited generation after generation from, uh, you know, uh, father, ancestors, uh, teacher, educators, then Allah sent uh, messengers, wise people, people who uh, just writers, all of that, they have their impact into the society have generation to inherit these good things. So when Islam come to this society, will help them to keep it. Will help them to keep it. Why? Because it's a good thing. So here the Sharia comes to change only the thing that is crooked from both sides to make it like hard sometimes when it's needed, to make it easy when it, uh, it is required, and that's because the Sharia is Rahmah. And to conserve and embrace things in the society. Why? Because it's good. Why is good? And this is all to, to uh, specify that the intent of the Sharia is not to enroot people from their roots, from their tradition, to change them and change their identity. But the intent of the Sharia is to develop, to orient always for the best, for the good. قال now when we look at the الفضائل والصالحات the good thing they are for example into the societies they are not all of them equal so the Sharia the Islamic jurisprudence when it comes to treat all these subject all these virtue all the values doesn't treat them the same so some of the values that the Sharia will take in consideration, specify, recommend to do. Why? Because it's very important to the society to not be neglected or to not be like it wear out from the tradition and from the habit of the people into the society. قال هنا 
so the Sharia comes to show that this is an obligatory. You have to have sabr here. You have to have a trust here. Uh, for example, this is uh, is recommended. This is is lawful. So this is how the Sharia comes to clothe every aspect, every value in the society with the cloth to maintain it, to recommend it, to uh, reinforce it, uh, some of it to have it permissible, uh, and that's how the Sharia uh, define those that balance of values to conserve. Uh, the ongoing of the good into the society. Uh, hadith in the uh, in the Sahihain that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam قال لقد هممت and this is very good hadith give you a lot of inspiration. قال لقد هممت أن أحرم الغيلة في الرضا. الغيلة is the action to make uh, to, to have an intimate relation between spouses while the woman, she's uh, uh, in time of feeding her baby, you know. Uh, she's like in period of rada'a. In period of the rada'a, is she's providing for her baby through the rada'a, through the rada'a. So, the Prophet ﷺ uh, is being heard in the, uh, in the society that that, you know, the relation, the intimate relation might weaken the woman, then will not have enough, you know, food for her baby and also might hurt her, her uh, health. So the Prophet said, I was going to forbid it. I was going to. لولا أن قوما من فارس يفعلونها ولا تضر أطفالهم. Then I have realized that some people from Persia, they are doing it. And it doesn't hurt or cause hurt to their children. So it is permissible. So this is, as I told you, hadith give you a lot of inspiration and give you a vast and depth in understanding the Islamic jurisprudence. So you see, it's not like restricted, hard, confined. No, it's very open. It's very open in a way that the most important, as we're studying here, is the intent. The intent of the Sharia is what the objective they want to achieve. That's why in the other hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu saying, Al-Hikmat wal mumin wisdom is what the believer is looking for. If you find it, wherever you find it, it's yours. It might be in the hand of someone who doesn't believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But he said a statement that helped then you take that wisdom and you benefit yourself with it and you can share it. Does it mean like if this person like far and rooted from the good, that uh, whatever he says is wrong? That's the fairness in Islam. If someone says something, statement good, that is help, it has wisdom, you take it and you use it. Uh, there is, you know, science. If someone, for example, and rooted and known to be like even uh, wicked in his behavior, but he invents something that it help uh, in certain instance, you know, uh, many people, you take it, you don't say no because the one who did it is the wrong person. That's the Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us that the wisdom uh, doesn't have an owner. You take the wisdom as it is, what benefit, and you take it and you embrace it and you use it. قال وأكثر ما يحتاج إليه في مقام التقرير حكم الإباحة لإبطال غلو المتغالين بحملهم على مستوى السواد الأعظم من البشر الصالح كما قال الله تعالى ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث One of the characteristics of the Sharia that the vast the vast uh, action, the vast element uh, in, in the action of the human being is covered by the mubah, permissible. So the sharia, the characteristic, this is the wisdom into the sharia, to not compel people into extremism. So when you say, for example, everything needs to have hukum, you know, uh, go uh, take a walk at the park, I need what is its ruling. 
sitting on a bench on a park on, by myself. What is it? He said, uh, it's, it's haram. Why is haram? You know. So there's the sharia to embrace society, tradition, the, the vast, the vast, uh, let's say, uh, portion of the ruling in the sharia is the mubah. Laying down mubah, take a walk is mubah. Eating whatever you want as long as at any time is mubah. Eating with your family uh, is recommended. Eating on yourself is mubah. With your friend is mubah. Uh, going to walk at the mall is mubah. So this is all mubah. So the vast majority of the ahkam are covered by the mubah, which is make the sharia to be very flexible and lenient. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Make halal for them everything tayyib, everything pure. Anything evil is haram. It's very easy. So it's very generous. وَقَدْ كَانَ ذَلِكَ ثَاشِيًا فَإِنَّ الطَّيِّبَاتِ تَنَاوَلَتْهَا النَّاسِ There's some society, and this is how Islam also corrects some bad habit in certain society, where they take things that are, you know, acceptable in many other societies. Mubaha, permissible. They make it, for example, uh, they say, oh, this is, in our tradition, is haram, prohibitive. Tayyib. Why is haram? It is halal to eat it. Who made it haram? For example, uh, there's some tribes in the Arab, I mean, I know, uh, there's a type of animal, isn't it haram to eat it? But people, because they don't like it, they made it haram. So everyone who's in the tribe say this is haram to eat it, which is the abab. Abab is kind of the lizard. It's not haram to eat it, but if you don't eat it, it doesn't mean like you have to eat it. So it's mubah. Whatever you want to eat it, it's fine. Uh, because they have kind of stories, so make up stories about it. Okay, oh, you cannot do this. Uh, you cannot walk through uh, this door at the time like the Jailiya before. Uh, in this certain time, uh, uh, you have to get to the house from the behind the house. You cannot enter from the from the door. So they make up things. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said about uh, the mushrikeen. They make some of the animals to be haram. Just because she, the camel is pregnant at the certain month is haram. Tayyib boy is haram. Uh, and whatever uh, it brings from this certain animal is halal for the male, but haram for the woman. Tayyib, how, how did you come up with such a thing? So these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abfalaha made it to be all void because it doesn't have any root, doesn't have any foundation. And this is what leads to extremism. This is what leads to the ghulu, to the excessiveness. So to keep the Islam in the, in the moderate way, this is how uh, the changing and the confirming and the embracing is done in always according to your objective. And the objective of the Sharia is mercy, is justice, is, is maslaha, is maslaha. In this last part of this chapter, and uh, قال والتقرير لا يحتاج إلى القول لا يحتاج إلى القول when the Sharia embrace or confer aspect that uh, a society already have has it Sharia doesn't come to say yes this is is confirmed no it's been embraced because it's objective the way it's done is good so the Sharia doesn't tell you yes I confirm it is good you know it is good by your own inner nature so قال والتقرير لا يحتاج إلى القول فقد علمت أن الاحتياج إلى القوم فيه لا يكون إلا عن سبب دعاء إلى القول من إبطال وهم. So the Sharia only comes to confirm a good thing unless there is something who people are excessive in it, or there is kind of an illusion or or wrong thoughts about things that doesn't exist or doesn't make sense. فيما عدا تلك الأسباب ونحو يعتبر سكوت الشارع تقريرا لما عليه الناس. So if there's anything that uh, the Sharia didn't speak uh, about it that is known to be good, therefore it's halal, it's mubah. 
because thus we have, uh, if you remember, we studied in Sulfaq for those who were with us in the first, uh, uh, the Ma'ad. Al-Aslu fil ishay fil ashay al Everything is supposed to be halal. Mubah, not halal, uh, acceptable, permissible. Unless the Sharia tell you otherwise. So, for example, say, uh, say, what is the ruling about uh, putting this book on the table? I say, why are you asking the question? Did the Sharia tell to, uh, telling you about how to treat a book on the table? Didn't. So it's mubah. You see, so the Sharia will not tell you to confirm you what you are doing is okay. As long as the Sharia didn't tell you it's not okay, then it is permissible what you do. And this is, subhanAllah, the flexibility and the uh, moderation. Uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rawahu uh, al-daraqutni, qala inna allaha faradha faraidha fala tudayyuha. Allah obligated, obligations, do not, la uh, tudayyuha, observe it, do not neglect it. Observe it and watch it and implement it. وَحَدَّ حُدُودًا فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put limitation, borders, do not cross it. وَحَرَّمَ أَشْيَاءً فَلَا تَنْتَهِكُوهَا And make things forbidden, so do not violate it. وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءَ رَحْمَةً بِكُمْ غَيْرَ نَسْيَانٍ And Allah didn't talk about things. A mercy from him, not because he forget to talk about them. Okay, it's a mercy. قَالَ فَلَا تَسْأَلُ عَنْهَا Don't ask about it. You see, you think you might have a question mark. The Sharia didn't talk about it. Don't think that Allah forget to, uh, to mention it. Allah keep it rahma for you, so don't ask about it. Wallah. And this is the beauty of our, uh, of our uh, Sharia, alhamdulillah. قال يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تسألوا عن أشياء إن تبدى لكم تسؤكم Don't ask about things when it revealed to you is going to hurt you you're not gonna like it so don't ask about it قال فالتغيير والتقرير قد يصادفان أحوال بعض الأمم دون بعض وهو الغالب uh, the changing, as we mentioned, and confirming or embracing, it might go with certain uh, society, and this is the majority, and it might not go with other society, which is very rare. For example, call, uh, things like making forbidden usury. It goes with all the majority of the society because usually before it was a tool of transgression, of dhulm. People before, when they don't pay their loan, they've been charged exorbitant, uh, you know, usually, which is like they have sometimes double of the money. And if they don't have, they turn into slavery. So they take them as slaves. Why? Because they could not pay. And not talking about the capital. If, for example, someone would be like getting a hundred dollars, and the, at, at the time he doesn't have to pay it, so he has to pay 200. And if he cannot pay, then become 300. And if he cannot pay, they take his child as a slave. So when Islam came to make it haram, this is, it fit with all, because it's, it's a relief to take injustice and oppression from the society. Wujub uh, al-mahr, to obligate the dowry. The dowry is a gift for the woman. So before, uh, the woman is inherited. And she doesn't have any right in any uh, estate of her parents if they passed away. And she's been object of inheritance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her to inherit and free her from all this limitation and this uh, chain that they have before. And more than that, he honored her by being given her as a gift because anyone who truly, sincerely want to have a partnership for the rest of his life with this lady, he has to show that he's really serious and he has high esteem of this lady by giving the mahr. So not the mahr because 
There's crooked interpretation of the mahar is like someone say, I'm buying. That's the most crooked way to, to say such a thing, an ill thing. Look in the Quran what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. So is a testimony of real uh, f- faithfulness and high esteem for this person. Give her the sadaq to keep it for her as a gift to herself and being ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is go with the majority of the society because it's something good to honor the woman. If someone, for example, killed by mistake, the family to pay like, you know, diya for them, you know, as, as, uh, as something to, to, to help them uh, bear this bitter and this difficulty that they had by losing their own who got killed, but killed by mistake. So the diya is to, to pay for the family, you know, a certain amount of money uh, as compensation, as, you know, to reduce the pain that they had. And all the society will embrace it because it's something uh, good. وَقَدْ يُصَادِفَانِ أَحْوَالَ الْبَشَرِ كُلَّهُمْ مِثْلَ And it might also, some of uh, ahkam, it really uh, goes with all the nature of the society. Like he given the example uh, to forbid alcohol. There's no one in the whole world who who will not state that alcohol is wrong. Even the drunker, he will be drinking and say, yes, I know it's wrong. So those things are everyone knows is wrong. But if they do it, doesn't mean that they justify it is good, but it's wrong. So make the alcohol also haram as a sharia when it comes to say, you know, in this faith, if you're going to embrace, know that is alcohol haram. He said, it makes sense. But the person said, it might take me time to, to stop doing it. But yes, it makes sense to, to make it forbidden. Uh, it makes sense to make smoking is haram. Taib in the sharia, through the ishtihad, they're making the, the ruling of smoking is haram. Through the ishtihad. I mean, now, if you see the society, for example, we say, uh, what, what do you say about smoking? You know, say, in our faith, is not accepted. Everyone say, well, this is a good thing. They start, you know, by uh, make it, you know, squeeze, make it kind of hard, hard on people to smoke. Say, uh, started with a flight. Flight, you cannot smoke. Then airport, you can smoke. Then start malls, you cannot smoke. So if people who smoke is always you find them in the close to the parking outside smoking it's because like hard on them. So why why those people who are still smoking they accept these rules? Because they know smoking is not good. So if the Sharia your Sharia are telling you this is haram, every saying say, yeah, it makes sense. Even those who smoke, they will accept it because it makes sense. So you see the the, the embrace what the Sharia embrace, what change? This all comes from the common sense and all leading to what we said, the main intent of the Sharia, mercy, correction, good, fairness, justice. That is the root of the Sharia, the heart of the Sharia, and the objective of the Sharia. Uh, also, Islam, min rahmat al-Sharia, and this is the last point of the, uh, here, that whatever done before Islam, it will be accepted. So someone, for example, he lived his life, he accept Islam, and something happened uh, that he did before Islam, which conflict with the law of, of the Sharia. So Islam will, will accept him as is. Uh, example that uh, the author has given us, qala uh, fafil أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أي مدار أو أرض قسمت في الجاهلية فهي على قسم الجاهلية. People for example they own lands, homes. The way they you know split it or distributed between the inheritors it was wrong. For example, the women they didn't give her anything. Now Islam came. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whatever is being done and distributed. And divided in the time of Jahiliyyah will stay like that. Why? Because 
if you want to redo everything, it's going to cause enmity, it's going to cause hatred. So whatever is past is past. We start from here. And وَقَالَ وَأَيُّ دَارٍ أَوْ أَرْضٍ أَدْرَكَهَا الْإِسْلَامُ وَلَمْ تُقْسَمْ فَهِيَ عَلَىٰ قَسْمُ الْإِسْلَامُ And any land or a home that wasn't divided or distributed between inheritors at the time of Islam need to be done according to the law of Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu in the day of the Fath, when he entered Mecca, they had a property, Bani Hashim. So when they told him about a home, where to say, قَالَ وَهَلْ تَرَكَ لَنَا عَقِيلٌ مِنْ دَارٍ عَقِيل is uh, one of his uh, ankles, the Prophet So it seems that he sold everything and he distributed in Jahiliya. So when the Prophet asked about home, he said, like Aqil, he distributed everything. So the Prophet didn't make all oh, it being done in the wrong way, so I'm going to take back all those property and redistribute them. Those homes have been taken by people and everything. And even the Prophet for things that is done in the past, he will not take it back because what he has done, done. And this is from the mercy of Islam as the author introduced it in this, uh, in this chapter. Uh, any question, inshallah, and we move to the next class. The next chapter that we'll be studying in Allah is uh, that all the ahkam of the sharia are regarded through their content, their meaning, not through or according to, to their names. Not everything called khamr is haram. Because someone can give name for, for uh, you know, because of the style of the bottle, you say, this is khamr. The question, you said, is khamr, if you drink it, will make you intoxicate? You say, no. Then it's not haram. Not because it's called khamr, because it's haram. No, the khamr, which is haram, because cause intoxication. So the intoxication in the khamr would make it haram, not the name, because his name, khamr, is haram. And this is also a good point that we're going to study, inshallah. Any question? few minutes and we'll start to get inshallah the next class at tuhfa al-iraqiyya fi al-a'mal al-qalbiyya bi shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyya rahimahullah ta'ala